So this is the recap to the fight night, Sanhagen versus TJ Dillashaw. Uh, let me give you guys a quick rundown. So the fights that I watched were the Macy Barber fight, the one where she fought Miranda Maverick. Um, I thought that Miranda Maverick, she won the first round because she was more active. Uh, Macy Barber, she's, she tends to keep going out of distance. She doesn't really set her feet and stay in the pocket long enough for her to connect on Miranda Maverick. But it was it was a good fight. I mean, I thought that Miranda won the fight because she was landing more strikes. And Macy got one takedown in the third round and Miranda got one takedown also. I think Macy, Macy was trying to be more aggressive with the takedowns in the third round. I thought Macy won the, the third round, but the first two rounds were pretty close. I mean, I, I guess you could you would say that Miranda Maverick definitely won. I mean, in my opinion, Miranda did win, but it was a pretty close fight. It wasn't really like a blowout or whatever people are trying to say. Why? Because, yeah, the first round was pretty close, you know, the filling out process here and there. But yeah, it was, it was a pretty, pretty good fight. Now, the main event, there's a lot of people that, Keep uh, making a lot of complaints about the main event. Okay, let let's give you guys a quick breakdown what happened. So Dillashaw is coming out fast, you know, hot, very hot in the first round. I thought that Dillashaw definitely won the first round for sure. But the knee, something happened with his knee. He got injured in the first round. You know, Dillashaw, Corey Sandhagen, he, he he injured Dillashaw in the first round. And it looked like he was going to suffer a knee injury and just get, you know, finished. It was because of the leg lock attempt that Sanhagen went with in the first round. Surprise. I was surprised that Sanhagen was kind of going for those Grammy rolls and, like, definitely going for more leg locks. I was kind of surprised. <laughs> and there was actually a round in which Sanhagen actually fucking, he shot for a takedown. Wrestling, he's trying to out-wrestle the wrestlers. Not a very smart game plan. The game, I felt that Sanhagen was very gun-shy. He wasn't throwing, being as active as he usually is. And that's really why I gave the rounds to TJ Dillashaw. Because Dillashaw was being first. Uh, a lot of activity. He was definitely leaning on him a lot more with the clinches. You know, I mean, uh, Dillashaw said that his knee was compromised in the first round, so he couldn't get the hooks in and finish with the choke. But yeah, I mean, it was it was it was pretty pretty cool, man. The fight was pretty good. I mean, pretty good. Sandhagen definitely had his moments. I mean, I thought Sandhagen won the second round for sure. Third round was pretty close. I gave it to Dillashaw. Fourth round, kind of dicey. I gave it to Sandhagen. So how many rounds so far? First round for Dillashaw, second round for Sanhagen. So I thought it was 2-2 two, two going into the fifth round. Um, the fifth round, who did I give it to? I give it to Dillashaw. Dillashaw was more active, a bit more active, you know. But um, <clears throat> I feel that the reason that Dillashaw, the, that Sanhagen lost was because of the, the back clinch kind of control, the control time with the back clinches. If he separated a lot sooner he would have been able to win what else because of the yeah because he wasn't active enough that's pretty much it and 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 he kept going for spinning attacks dude he, he should have kept going with some straight punches because when you when you throw a lot of spinning spinning punches then you, you can get taken down the, the, the fighter can time those the, those spinning shots you know and, and get underneath you trying for a takedown be in a dominant, dominant position in the clinch. The back clinches were very dominant and very good for Dillashaw in this fight. That's probably what won him to fight. You know, it adds up some control time and stuff like that. Leg kicks were very instrumental for Dillashaw in this fight. I think that Sanhagen with just a couple adjustments, I feel that his corner definitely did him some just a just disservice because your corner is supposed to tell you to be more active and. It's about the hour. I didn't see the urgency from Corey Sanhagen's corner in the fifth round. You gotta tell him to empty the gas tank. This is the last round. But you guys are like, oh, you're doing everything great. And he's not doing everything great, bro. Like he's he lost the fourth round. He's getting outpaced. He, he's getting clinched up easily at the on the back. 
like he's getting dominated in those positions and you're like oh, okay whatever like what and the Brendan Allen and Bonahara Soriano fight that was a good fight that fight was really good um what happened in that fight the first round uh, Brendan Allen was actually being very aggressive, like not very aggressive, but Punahala Soriano, his name is very hard to pronounce, he was being very, very aggressive. But the thing is, throwing single shots with fight ending intentions, and Brendan Allen was being very, very, very active, not trying to take his head off with every single punch, He's being very conservative and definitely being the more active fighter along three rounds. That's basically how the fight went. Uh, there was a couple of takedown attempts from Brendan Allen in the second and the third rounds, but he didn't really uh, go for the takedowns. I think they were really to slow him down, but he dominated the fight from start to finish. I think Soriano won the third round because he was starting to time him. Brendan Allen started to get tired, but the body work from Brendan Allen was exceptional in that fight. Very, very good with the body kicks and, and, and the punches to the body to slow down Puna. Very smart, very smart game plan. The body work is what won him the fight in this in this fight in this regard. Definitely very superior body punches, and that slowed down Punahala Soriano so much because in the third round he emptied the gas tank. But if if Brendan didn't didn't do all that body work early on, then those punches would have been a bit more powerful, you know. Because when you invest in the body early in the fight, it pays dividends as you as the fight goes on. It's the same with leg kicks. Your opponent's going to start to become more labored in their punches and they're going to start to slow down and throw less punches than before because they're more tired. <clears throat> and what other fight did I want? Uh, let's see another fight. Um, Adrian Yanis versus Randy Costa. Randy Costa was dominating the first round, definitely being very, very active. Uh, I think he got, a, he, he didn't get a knock, he didn't get a knockdown, but he, 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 it seemed like he was going to finish Adrian Yanis. But Giannis managed to weather the storm, and he came back in the second round and definitely dominated the second round and finished him in the second round with a TKL. Ooh, the fire that I was really impressed in the middleweight division with is the Nasruddin Imamov versus Ian Heinish fight. That one was really, really good. Ian Heinish was trying to wrestle him, right? But Imavov, his wrestling is exceptional in high level. He was definitely defending all those takedowns. He's exceptional in his top, in, his, in everything. Like, he, he got a takedown, but they managed to get back up. Uh, I feel Inihanish was too heavy on the wrestling here. You know, you have to be more creative, throw more punches and stand on the pocket. But good fight. Imavov, I'm very impressed with him. Like, he's exceptional. His takedown defense was beautiful and perfect. His stand-up is pretty good, too. It's not bad. I mean, he finished him in the second round. I mean, it was very impressive. Very impressive. I mean, extremely impressive. I was like, how is this guy able to defend every single takedown? And he's bringing the pressure, bringing the pace, smashing him, and just beating the fuck out of Ian Heinish in the second round. Sorry for my language, but it's a very dominant performance by Marbov. I'm looking forward to him breaking, up in, breaking into that top 15 spot. Uh, Mickey Gall, very, very impressive. I felt he was very heavy with the wrestling here. And Jordan Williams, he would manage to escape the guillotine. I remember he was very, uh, what's his name? Mickey was very heavy, was very deep on the guillotine. But, you know, Jordan Williams is very experienced, so he's able to just, you know, break out of that guillotine by, how did he do it? He flipped and then he just, you know, turned himself into the choke and got out. But why did he give up his back? That that was such an amateur move by Jordan Williams. I feel that he felt he was becoming more comfortable in escaping the submissions. Probably the, the guillotine escape probably puffed his head up a little bit and he thought, okay, I can give up my back to this guy. So because, because, because he got taken down and then he wanted to get back up. So he thought, okay, let me give my back to, to, to Mickey Gall. This was the, the rationale. He was trying to get back up, so he gave his back up. And you can't do that with a Brazilian black belt that has five rear naked choke submissions. Even if you think... I thought that he was more, more, you know... I thought that he was very, very confident in his jiu-jitsu. But I didn't like it. The back defense, the rear naked choke, the back defense wasn't that good. He wasn't even fighting the hands. He was, the, the, the hooks went in too easily. 
Wow, I was not impressed with Jordan Williams. He he was bad, very bad performance by Jordan Williams. The guillotine defense was good, but why would you go back to the ground on this guy? Why are you shooting for a takedown? Why are you trying to grapple with a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu? That doesn't make any sense. Keep the fight standing, bro. I think he could have kept the fight standing too, and then the guy took the fight to the ground and then he gets choked out. What an idiot. It was from a scramble, right? Man. Jordan Williams, not very high fire IQ for sure. I was in, I was not impressed with this victory by Mickey Gall. I felt that it was more because Jordan Williams effed up than Mickey Gall was good. It, it's whatever, man. He didn't put a good performance up. I, 